We're going to start today, but I'm going to ask Charmaine to start with the um, the picture of nativity there. So there we have the um, the light shining in the darkness. I'm going to open up with the opening prayer of today's mass. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, Heavenly Father. Pour forth your grace into our hearts that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son, the incarnation of the Word becoming flesh in Jesus Christ, the Son of Mary, was made known by the message of an angel and may by his passion and his cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection he who lives and reigns with you, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So we know that prayer well because that's the prayer we always pray at the Angelus. But when you look at that prayer, I mean, when you look at the, uh, the image, you see the light is shining. And the darkness is, uh, well, people are coming out of the darkness because they are attracted to the light. And... Uh, this is the essence of our desire for the Lord coming out of our own darkness and the darkness that surrounds us in the world because the light is shining. But also there is the open arms of Jesus Christ. He's calling us. So there is the desire in us, but above all the desire in Christ Jesus. And that's what this whole reflections were the last three weeks is his desire for us. That's the center that draws us. Yes, we have to come. We have to make the, the journey. But he shines the dark, the, his light into our darkness. And his, eye, his arms are open. And he is sent by the Father because it's the Father's desire. In today's gospel, we have the angel says that John, uh, Mary is to name her son Jesus. This comes from, from, from the father. It's the father who is naming his son. Now, you, you who have children, you know, you've named your children, uh, uh, maybe so, somebody from the family or maybe some uh, saint or maybe some hero or, or for some reason, or maybe you just like the, the, you just like the sound of that, that, uh, that name. Uh, but that reflects something about you as a family and about you as the way you name your children. Well, the father's heart is revealed in the name of his son, because his son's name, Jesus, means savior, which means the heart of the father is to save us. And so that's his desire for us. This whole last three weeks and today is how can we become more available to open ourselves, to be more receptive, to allow him to come in. That's the whole prayer of Augustine. You were with me, uh, Lord, but I was not with you. Here is the baby. The light is shining. We are coming into the light. But how do we allow the light to come into us? That's it. Where, how do we allow his desire and his light to come into us? There's many ways that we, as we said the last two times, there's many ways that we somehow, uh, it, it's a hindrance where, where there are, there are um, filters in us because we, the human predict predicament is this, that it's not easy even to know maybe our own hearts because we grow just slowly and mature as persons, but we've been hurt. And so we become defensive and sometimes we hurt other people. And so all of this breaks down the communication. How many times there are people who start off very well, they want to get married, they fall in love. And before you know it, communication starts to, to dwindle, maybe because their lack of being there for one another, or they're so taken up with, the, with the, maybe their careers or who knows what, what baggage they're, that they're, um, you know, live, uh, unpacking uh, or even maybe don't want to look at. And so all of that. And so all of this is the desire. How can we, that's why this desire is expressed in prayer. And how do we pray more effectively? There were six sessions that I 
that I had with you uh, some uh, months ago or so, more about two months ago, uh, is the first one is uh, how to make ourselves more available. And so, okay, now you can maybe bring that down, uh, Charmaine. Uh, I would like to now go into another way of prayer. During those six sessions of prayer uh, that we had about two months ago, three months ago, um, I spoke that Lexio Divina was a way of helping us to communicate, to help us to come into the presence of the Lord so that the Lord's presence could come into us. And I'm just briefly going to go over these four very, very briefly. The one, first of all, is lexio, which is a Latin word for reading, but that is to become receptive. What is there in front of me? To go to the text, but it doesn't only have to be the text, although that's probably centered in it when I'm opening up the Bible, but even we can do that with, with anything. We can do that with an experience in our life. We could do it with nature to become, to become um, receptive. And that's the lexio. And that is the meditatio. How do I allow that? when I'm hearing what I'm receiving, what is sort of becoming, I'm becoming aware of, how do I let that somehow see, seep into my, into my heart, into my, uh, into my uh, emotions, into my thoughts? Again, and I use the example, it's like yeast. If yeast is the power uh, of the word, uh, we, the, the, the baker needs, K. And EAD, he needs that, or she needs that yeast into the lump so that it becomes throughout. Jesus uses that example in, in the parable of the woman who, who was baking bread. And how do I let that, my experiences, my own life and the word of God uh, interpenetrate so that his word and my uh, life become intertwined. I use an example of almost like weaving a rug. How, how does the warp and the woof, the, the warp of his, his word and the woof of my life, the shuttle, how do, how, how do I see that making one fabric? And then the oratio is that I, then I speak one, I speak person to person uh, to either the Father or the Son or Holy Spirit or, or to Mary or, or to a saint. In other words, I actually speak. I just don't think about it. Just just don't mull over it, as good as that is. And then there's the contemplatio, is just to stay quiet and sort of just allow, if I use again the example of the, of the bread, there's the time you just have to let it raise, you know, just let it, or let it rise. So let, let it just, just by itself, you, you just let it be. It, it, will, it will take over, it's just the silence. And as I said, when somebody really, when they get to know each other, all they need to do is be, it be in each other's presence. Uh, now, Today I'm going to teach you another sort of, because there's no other way of doing it, even in, in, in intimate relationships, these, these four dynamics have to take place. They do, they just have to. So, so in a sense, the, the, the intimacy and the human level between people is as easy or as difficult as, you, as intimacy with the Lord. The difficulty with the Lord is we don't see him, uh, but we do have in Christ, and we have in the Word, and we have in our art and every other thing. We in nature, He brings Himself present to us. Uh, but nevertheless, that because intimacy, even in, in 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 among humans, isn't all that easy. It it, it takes it takes uh, discipline. It takes uh, one's ability to pay attention and to grow because we change. The other person changes. Um, today, I'm going to go to another way of doing it. And I'd be, the first one is to, uh, and I'm going to read the gospel passage um, today, which is the Annunciation. You know, the angel comes upon her and, and she's, very, she's very surprised. She didn't expect this. Uh, that was the last thing she expected. Um, and the, the angel, uh, he uh, says, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Um, and it says she was greatly troubled at this. Um, it, it says she was greatly troubled uh, and she pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And so in other words, she became aware of, of what was happening. 
she it was startled her, but she, but she became aware of it. And the angel reflects on that, that she's filled with fear and she's pondering. And so the first thing that when we stop and when we pray, we have to stop. In fact, I even in those six sessions of prayer, I said, how do we come into the quiet? How do we? It's not easy. And remember, I said that maybe sometimes we just have to take some breathing, slow breathing so that we can settle down. Because if, if we're not aware of where we are, if we're not acknowledging that, um, we're just somehow uh, maybe beside ourselves. We're just, we're, we're not paying attention. We'll see that in people when they're, when they're listening to us. You say, I don't think he's paying attention. Are you listening to me? In other words, we're preoccupied. Um, and so th this, what I'm going to give you right now is posted. So I'm not going to bring up the text because all this is posted uh, on the, the website. So you can bring it up and, and you can uh, read it to become more aware of it. So to, to ask myself, what is stirring within me? What feelings, thoughts, what is what joys, emotions, my desires, my consolations, my disappointments, my hopes, expectations, temptations, my relationships, whatever it is. Remember that man when he came into the to the church to pray. Finally, it was one of the first times in his life that he was settling down within himself. I mean, he was and it was he was allowing somehow himself to be receptive and he was becoming aware of something that he was was denying or running away from most of his life or even that monsignor when he had to go to <laughs> to that therapy to the, he had to go to that um, the, the place of uh, you know becoming aware of it to basically he was an alcoholic and he himself said he was in recovery he had to somehow become aware of what of what he was running away from remember he said that he was that he was trying to impress instead of bless and he didn't even realize it so by doing this, I turn my attention to becoming aware of what I'm experiencing so that I would become more to go to the center as much as possible. It's never, but at least as an attempt making baby steps to go into that center so that I can act rather than impulsively react because it's so easy for us to react. I strive to find my center. And even if I say that, you know, I, I'm all mixed up, uh, Lord. Here I am. I'm, I'm. Well, that's you're just acknowledging it. You just you're not putting on a pretense. Well, here I am. I'm. Oh, I'm just throwing myself. And you know, we're reading. Sometimes we read these texts, which are beautiful, and as beautiful as the texts are, that's not where I am. <laughs> You know, some of these texts, especially from the 17th century, I throw myself into the abyss of my mercy. Well, am I actually doing that? <laughs> well, that's the word said. And I feel I feel better by saying it. <laughs> that's not my sentiments. I couldn't be, I could be further from these sentiments. <laughs> now, this isn't where I am. <laughs> I mean, as good as this is, this is somebody else's prayer. You know, we shouldn't be praying as I think I should pray or what people told me to pray. I have to, here I am. That's one of the things when, when God calls anybody in the Old Testament, they always say, here I am, Lord, and so forth, so that I can strive in as much to be as possible at home within myself, that maybe I can't be. So then I just have to maybe say, Lord, here I come. I'm at loose ends today. I'm all over the place. You know, I can't settle down. That's what the psalmist does. The psalmist says, here I am. And then he, he, he says all kinds of stuff. Then he's and he's complaining, you know, and, and but at least he's open about it. But when he does that, at least it's he's allowing it to surface, but he's not surfacing it alone. He's doing it in the presence of the Lord. And there's a big difference when we just stay in our own room and we just go and we're, we're just be like in a squirrel cage or we're just going around all by ourselves. No, I'm doing this before the Lord. I mean, people do that to counselors. They come and they tell the counselors just how it is, or, or pastoral, uh, or, or pastoral counseling, or sometimes even confession. If the, if there's if they can start to open their heart, sometimes I'll say to people when they really go to confession after they're finished, I'll say, of all the things that you just said, what what disturbs you the most? Oh, oh yeah, let me say what is. In other words, make are you aware of what, you know? Then see, see, this is what it is. But then Mary hears that and, and then she begins to relate to it. 
he says the angel said you're going to bear a son you know and he is going to be great he's going to be the son of the most high and uh and we heard it today in the first reading in today's gospel that uh the promise to david and so they knew that he was going to be the son of david and 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 so he said david he will he will be the son of david and in and, and god will give him the throne of his his father uh jacob well she knows the texts this is well known to her she knows what he's saying and so what does she do to that she responds she she relates to that or she's receiving it then she's 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 receiving it uh she's acknowledging it and then uh she is beginning to to relate to it how how is this going to happen to me she's relating to it now you know how I'm a virgin I I haven't now that's that's another question how if she's betrothed is she expect to be a, a virgin that's we're not going to get into that now but everything that is her expectation she said how is this going to be so she's asking the the angel a question she wants to relate to what the angel just said to her because you know god will enter into your life in a significant way and her life will be affected and she's seeing that and not only is that but but she's got somehow being affected by the bigger picture of the whole expectations of the people of Israel it's almost too much i can only relate to what the lord is saying to me if i get a better idea and i ask you know the the woman of samaria when we're getting the fourth chapter of john uh, when when jesus asked the woman of samaria you know give me a drink she said why are you asking me for a drink she acknowledged she said this shouldn't be you shouldn't be asking me and then she's trying to say you know she's trying to uh, relate to him in some way but she said relating we don't have anything to do together you know you're supposed to be on one side and i'm on the other side and this is how she's starting to relate to him uh is in in sort of in opposition but at least she's 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 she just didn't say shut up and run away <laughs> she's still in his presence and so this is what we have to do to relate you know uh, what i am experiencing that i come to the lord in all confidence and i and i and and i i know that who i am we can only relate if we have a better idea of who we are that that samaritan woman said i'm a samaritan and you're a jew and we shouldn't be talking to one another and anyway i'm a woman alone here and you're a man and i don't want to be talking to you so in other words she recognizes who she is and we have to recognize who we are and so whenever we come into the presence of god especially when we come in the presence of the father we have to also acknowledge father you are the father and i am your child I'm your I am your beloved daughter. I'm your beloved son. We have a relationship. But that I have to relate to that. And I tell people very often when you pray the our father, just after you say our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, stop and say, Lord, yes, you are the father of us all, but you're my father as well. I'm special in your eyes. When you go home and you go to your your to to your house or you go and you visit somebody let's say maybe a, a a daughter or something and you have a key to the place obviously you're going to call your daughter up or your son that you're going to come to visit them but when when your daughter when your son or your daughter you know comes home for college and all that they have a key to the house they just come in they know that they belong there <laughs> they're they're you're, that's why we call them relations <laughs> they're relating to one another and so you know say to the lord you know what i'm experiencing i come into and i have to recognize who i am who am i to to to, to then and then we become aware of the how he sees me what i'm experience i say lord here i am i am your beloved child jesus you have come to me i'm your disciple holy spirit i am your 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 living temple because the lord desires uh, this intimate relationship with us it it follows that he desires to enter into my inmost noble and uh, holy and noble thoughts whenever you go and if you're talking to a counselor he expects you 
or she expects you to say to hopefully to go into the interior and start opening up things that maybe you wouldn't to anybody else because there's a there is a relationship of trust when you talk to your spouse that kind of you should be able to say to, and, and open up areas that maybe slowly when you get to maybe sometimes you have to wait about it so but you have to say we have to get to talk on a deeper level we have to relate to on a deeper level we just have to so you see this this way of looking at is is what's going on inside of me see and and we have to say he desires to enter into my inmost holy and noble thoughts feelings and desires he desires to share my joys you know what does the lord say may my joy be in you he also desires to enter in my own sinful and shameful and shabby areas of my heart my wounds my loneliness my angers jesus says the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost it's not the healthy that needs a doctor but the sick i have not come to call the self-righteous but the sinners when you go to the doctor you know he'll say take off all your clothes <laughs> Because there's a, but you have to, you have to be there, you might say, because you're saying he wants to help you, or she wants to help you. In other words, what's, what's, and so that re relating is relating on the deeper level of trust. Now, it takes a long time. You don't do this. Uh, this is a growth. That's why prayer is a lifelong experience. What Mary was pondering in her heart. At, at nativity what she was pondering in her heart when she took him to, to the temple of 30 uh, 40 days and uh the, simeon said that the soul is a, a, a sword was going to pierce her heart what she was relating when they were fleeing to egypt what they were whenever she was with him in in nazareth and and then finally when he left home in other words th these relationships change we, it's not they're not static but I invite my, uh, the Lord directly. Now I said, and you can speak, obviously you cannot say everything to even maybe your closest friend or even to your spouse, because you always have to hold back maybe a little bit because you don't know how she or he, he will accept it or whether they'll be able to understand or, but, uh, and so you don't want to get into any arguments or misunderstanding. But with, when it comes to the Lord, there's nothing is off limits, nothing. All you got to do is look to, at, the, at the psalmist. The psalmist says, God, Jesus prayed the 22nd Psalm on, on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He's just letting the Lord know just how he feels. Now, if you read that Psalm, which is, you know, it comes probably from, from maybe 900 years before Jesus was even born. If you pray the whole Psalm, you'll see that the Psalmist works through that, but that's where he starts. And he's, and he's going to relate to the Lord, knowing that the Lord will somehow, he's not going to slam the door in his face. Nothing is off limits with the Lord. He desires that I invite him into my restlessness and confusion and into my memories of shame that which is maybe I feel un unclean. Like that fellow, again, I go back when he was there, he said, you know, I come here because I wanted to come and I somehow now if I've been sitting here, I, I want, I think somehow I even feel that the Lord wants me to get closer to him as I want him to come closer to me. It's a very, how should I say, he was very, not very clear about it because he hadn't prayed in 20 years but somehow the light was shining in that darkness. So this means that I just avoid simply thinking about all this. This means that this is going, this is what Mary said, it pondered, she pondered these things in her heart. It has to go from the head to the heart. I speak directly and candidly to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who desires to relate to me personally. For God loves me as his own. We have that in the third Eucharistic prayer that you have what you have drawn us father to, uh, to be your own. And how many times it'll come in the old Testament. I am going to be your God and you will be my people. So I come into God's presence just as I am, just how I feel. I turn to, you could go to any of the Psalms. I have a number of the Psalms there. You go there where they just let it, and, and then you'll have maybe, all right, the Psalm 22 is, 
my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The next Psalm, which is Psalm 20, 23, the Lord is my shepherd. <laughs> There's nothing I shall want. How those two, <laughs> the difference between those two Psalms, their eff effective movements and their feet are very different. And yet they're put right together. So in other words, we should always come to the Lord without any fear or hesitations or inhibitions, no matter how I feel. I come here, I'm a mess today, but this is how I am. You know, I have to acknowledge that. I can't pretend because, you know, sometimes people say, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing fine. Well, that's okay. We have to do that in politeness. Obviously we can't do that. And so, well, let me tell you, <laughs> that's the last thing. Because <laughs> they're not really interested if you want to know the truth. <laughs> this is being, but the Lord doesn't want that. <laughs> We have to be respectful to the Lord, but we can't, we shouldn't just want to be polite. <laughs> now I'm going to stop here and, and say, is there anybody, is there anybody have a, any, um, any questions or any, anything, this have any questions, we'll take this just right now. Have I lost you? Do you see how this is sort of tying into this coming into the, to the, sta the stable there, seeing the Christ child? Okay, here, Kathy. Uh, and Jeff, anything? Monsignor, um, this is Mary. I have okay. trouble with, um, at the night prayer and the breviary with the, um, I think it's the 14th Psalm, Psalm of a very sick person, um, huh. praying that many nights of the week. And, and um, because I just don't- Are you I talking about that. maybe on Friday evening, Friday night prayer? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, Friday night prayers of uh, Psalm 88. It is okay. of all of all of the 150 Psalms. And I don't know how many there are lamentations. It'll start off like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And there are many others that start off, you know, that they, and they'll have all kinds of feel like I, I'm like an owl on, alone on the roof. I'm like, a, you know, a sparrow chirping, you know, in the desert. I mean, they have all of these. I feel like my bones are racked. I, you know, I, I'm just, there's all kinds of expressions so that, that this, it, the Lord knows just how he feels. Psalm 88, of all of the Lamentation Psalms, that's the only one, I'm glad you brought it up, does not end on a high note. It ends with this, my only companions are darkness. And how in the world, in the 150 Psalms, why does the word of God put that one Psalm there? Because sometimes that's just how we feel, but he's not doing this alone, ruminating about it. He's bringing it, he's addressing it to the Lord. And sometimes that's whenever we really feel down, we have to, we have, it, he's telling the truth. There's no sense here. Well, that he doesn't hear the Lord say, well, cheer up, cheer up, cheer up. No, no, he doesn't. He said, I'm not cheering up. <laughs> In fact, he says, you're the one that, that did this to me. And it's there. You don't have to. And so we have to have the courage to speak, to pray like that. But you see, this is not the end of his story. If that was the end of his story, that would not be in the Bible. <laughs> but that's the way at one time in his life, how he felt. And he was not, he was not afraid to, to say that to him because you see, he still, if you, I don't have that prayer in front of me right now, but it does start off, I cry to you, Lord. So he is coming with a desire, but he's not, you know, but he's also complaining to him. But this is how I feel. And, you know, and it's, it is, there's 150 Psalm, it's the only one, <laughs> but it shows that the word of God is there that we don't have to pretend. And I think then, then, of course, what we have to do when we do that, we have to also receive. We just don't slam the door and say, that's the last time I'm gonna to talk to you. Then we have to say, what is the Lord's? And we don't know what he received because that's the end of the Psalm. Most of, I mean, all the other, they tell us how he received and you know how they, st how they start to receive when they remember how in these other lamentation psalms how he worked in the past how god you rescued our people at the at the red sea how you came to our fathers how you blessed uh, jacob how you did this and then when they do that they're starting to remember how the lord was good to his people to the family 
uh, that he, to whom he belongs. And then from that, it starts to, something begins to, to, to gestate. And that's why Psalm 22 ends up on a very high note where actually that all the nations will, but he will proclaim it to all the nations, which of course is what happens in Jesus' life. It ends with the resurrection. But it's a good, it's, it's a good, uh, well, I'm glad you brought that up. But it also gives us the courage to pray as we are, not as well people tell us we should pray. Well, you know, I know I shouldn't say that to the Lord. Well, just read the Psalms. <laughs> what about, what about Moses? What did, did he, you know, God says, you're, I'm very unhappy with your people. Moses says, no, 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 no. It's not my people. It's your people. I didn't ask for this job. <laughs> and if, and I'm fed up with it now, you know, <laughs> and he tells, <laughs> or Jeremiah says, Lord, you, you know, you duped me, Lord. And I let myself be duped. Jeremiah was fed up with him, but that wasn't the end of it. You know yourself, if you've ever been in a close relationship, you've had some very pretty good arguments with the people you love the most. <laughs> it's when you start to stuff it. Now, as I said, obviously you can't say everything is maybe, maybe even your closest friend or your spouse, but to the Lord, you can say anything. You have to say everything, even though you're, and then when it comes out, you say, oh my goodness, is, did I say this? Then maybe then you could address it, okay? So then we go into the other is what, how did she receive it? How did Mary, how did, or let's say in the, most of the, all those lamentation Psalms, except one, we know how they received it because it's there. But now in Mary's words, what does she do? She says, you know, behold that, she says, behold the handmaid of the Lord. She says, here I am. I'm here as the handmaid of the Lord. That's how I'm, that's how I'm receiving it. She knows who she is. She's also acknowledging she, uh, she is, uh, you know, she's receiving it. She knows who she is, the handmaid of the Lord. And she says, let it be done to me. So she receives it. And so we have to ask for that grace. And in fact, that was the end of the, of the, of the session last, year, last week. You know, Lord, give me the grace to be generous, to receive and to experience your great love for me. I have to ponder in my heart the presence of the Lord and welcome him. This attitude of receptivity opens my eyes to see the Lord is present. He's present in many. Yes, he's present in scriptures. He's present in, 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 in silence. He's present in, um, in nature and in our imagination. He's present in our memories. And, you know, it, obviously the memory of Mary was, was jogged because she remembered the word of God and she remembered that this is a prophecy. And she remembered the implications of that. Her memory... Uh, open the, the implications of this and how important it is for us. And very often, this is the, our memories are the very thing that we somehow unconsciously allow ourselves to forget. And we're acting out of just the present and we're forget, forgetting the past. In the psalmist, and especially in, in these Lamentation Psalms, um, they remember the good things and the, the power that the Lord was always with, with their people. And even or in them, even from my youth, you were with me. Why aren't you with me now? They'll remember. And that remembering brings them back into a, the relationship. And I think we, it's so important to invite the Lord into one maybe such vivid memory in an effective way to receive a particular grace he desires to give me now. Yes, the Lord, he was with me then, but the same Lord is with me now. Remember, when we go into a memory before the Lord uh, in prayer, we are on his turf, so to speak, and he is timeless. St. Peter says in his second letter, chapter three, there is no time with God. A thousand years, a single day, it is all one. And so when you come to before the Lord, and let's say you're going to your, your son or your grandson's first communion. You might go back to your own first communion. And if you go and you pray over your first communion, and then you remember how that was, and you can give thanks to God, we forget that. We forget a lot of the good stuff that happens when we were kids or growing up or the time we celebrated. 
maybe for whatever it was, a victory or maybe after a retreat. You know, we, we go to a retreat, it's a good, but do we ever recall those memories? And whenever it's so very important for us, maybe when we are down and so forth, is to is to say, Lord, you know, help me to recall a memory so that I can celebrate and to go into it. And maybe even go, if let's say if you, you remember your first communion or if you remember the, the day of the birth of your child, sometimes people people are converted. They have conversions, uh, maybe at the birth of a child, they have a conversion, uh, maybe at a death or you know, there's a, maybe someone dies and they work through some grief. And then all of a sudden something happens and the Lord's presence becomes, and that happened maybe 15, 20 or 30 years ago. And we forget the past goodness of the Lord and that is present now that same God is present then was who was present then is present now and do we celebrate those we forget to celebrate them we just see now our present situation but he has brought us here and then it's so good to and then to, to pray into that particular experience and give thanks to God for that memory I want you know I often think how did Mary pray the Magnificat throughout her years how did she pray the Magnificat when you know when she heard that a, a sword of sorrow a sword is is going to pierce her heart how did she pray the Magnificat when she was fleeing into the desert into, into Egypt in the middle of the night you think she prayed it the same way that she prayed it in the present in the presence of, of of uh, Elizabeth when she was just pregnant for maybe about a, a few weeks. How did she pray it, you know, when when um, the uh, they had to go back to, to Nazareth and settle down? How did she pray it when he left? How did she pray it when Joseph died? How did she pray the Magnificat all these times? You know, she prayed the good times when she prayed the Magnificat and she was able to give praise to God because she knew he would be there. And so to see that and to go into that memory and to see him there bestowing this grace upon us and recalling it. Now, when you're seven or and maybe eight or nine years old, you're receiving your first communion. Uh, obviously you're not so taken up with it, but now in life, when you go back to that, I have no doubt you can see the altar, you can see the church, you can see the people and see the Lord. Yes, he came to you and you were very overwhelmed in many ways, or maybe I don't, maybe you weren't over so overwhelmed. You know, Dorothy Day in her long loneliness, she, she, she was a convert, she was a great woman, if you know, you know and, and she, she became, she was a communist and she was, a, she was an anarchist and everything and she was converted. And the day of her baptism, uh, and she said, you know, I just, I didn't feel anything. And I go back to that because I was sort of, and she goes back to, but she still sees, she says, but now I recall it. And now I see the Lord there in a way that I, I at the time I didn't see it. And I give thanks to him. But what about uh, recalling a painful memory? The problem is we, we don't like to go back to those painful memories. And obviously we, you should never ever in a million years go back to a painful memory all by yourself. But why go back there? That's when you felt all alone. That's when you felt nobody was with you. That's when you were rejected. That's when maybe you were a failure. Maybe it, it was your own fault. Maybe that's when you fell on your face like that Monsignor in the middle of, the, of a whole banquet because he, he had drank too many months, uh, uh, you know, martinis. And he told, he told that to everybody that was, he was giving a mission. I'm not saying anything that he told me personally. And, uh, but you know, how do you, he went back there to that memory and he saw the Lord there at that, at that banquet, looking at him. And he didn't see him condemning him. He saw him as he looked when, as Peter looked across, as Jesus looked across the courtyard at Peter, when Peter said, I do not know him. And he, and he knew that the Lord was already, and even though he was drunk and he was unconscious, that the Lord was already pouring out grace upon him, that, that rescuing him. So how do you, whenever you see with the time of your shame or when you made mistakes and you wish, go back there with him so that you can what? You can what? You can, you can receive. Yes, and you can relate and you can let him love you as you are, not the way you wish you had been or wish you had never been or what they did to you or not did. Because if you don't go back there, and very often when you do go back there, 
And this is something that we're going to have to, you're, you're going to, those people who hurt you so very deeply, with him, you've got to forgive them. And that's going to be the subject of our Lenten series. Is because you go back there, you're bound to go back there in fear and trepidation, but we have a tendency either to, to think, oh, that was in the past, let's forget about it. But it's not, it's, it's just there. It's like a tumor that, it, that encapsulates itself and it keeps on pumping out you know, negative feelings or, or fears or shame or resentments or anger or even worse, maybe even desire for vengeance. You know, and we and we have a tendency to say, "Well, I'm working on it." You can't work. You, you can't work on it. It's working on you. <laughs> See, when we say, "Oh, I'm working on it," it's like the ball is in your court. No, the ball is in our court. <laughs> there is no his. We're together in this. I'm receiving this, whether it be the joyful time or the sorrowful time. I'm I'm with you, and you're with me. You know, Nike has a, um, a slogan, just do it. The Lord never says, just do it. He says, we're going to do this together. I'm Emmanuel, God with us. Why go back to a memory that was so painful? He wants to go back there that in time, he'll say, I was there with you then. I was not absent, even though you felt like you were all alone. You know, Woody Allen, he likes to, he's a, you know, Woody Allen, the comedian, he's from New York. And being from New York, he likes to have a tendency to have a few jibes in New Jersey, the neighbor to the south. <laughs> so, and he, what does he say? And he said, God is, south is actually southwest of New York. He says, God is present to everywhere in the universe except for a few places in New Jersey. <laughs> you know, I, we have a tendency to say God is present everywhere, but he wasn't present with me then. We don't say it, but we think that. He wasn't with me then. He was with you, but if he was there with you, he is there with you as Jesus, the savior. Let him go back there with you, invite him in back in you to recall that. This is why he says, come to me, all you who are weary and find life burdensome, and I will give you rest. But we have to be, because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And so a yoke brings two animals, two oxen together, neck to neck shoulder to shoulder, so they pull the load together. And so he's, you're, you're yoked with him. That's the cross. But the cross brings you together with him. And in the cross is the presence of the father. Because remember, he named Jesus savior. Asking you shall receive, seeking you shall find, knocking the doors. And then respond. And she responded. She said, yes, I will. And you know what she did? She got up immediately. And she went to, to Elizabeth. She responded with her life. And she all those 90 miles that she was she was traveling to get to uh, Ein Karim, which is near, uh, which is in Jude, uh, Judea, she had to be pondering so that whenever she entered into Elizabeth's house, she burst out into the Magnificat. And she responded. So how do I respond? That's to say, you know, how it, with all this that I've experienced, I open my heart to the Lord and receive it. My is to, to respond and say, Lord, give me the grace now. Give me the show me. So I, I want to wait upon you. And so she got up. Instead of saying, well, now that's good. Now I'll wait around here and see what happens. No, no. She want, the word of God spoke to her. Said the angel said, Elizabeth, your kins, kinswoman, kins, uh, kins uh, cousin, I suppose, uh, is um, with child already six months. And she goes so that she could, and she spent three months with her so she could be there at the, at the birth of John the Baptist. In this way, you see, and, and so you have acknowledge. And then you have three R's. You know, when you were, you were kids, we had the three R's. We had reading, writing, and arithmetic. This is A, to acknowledge how I feel. And then you have to, what, to, uh, you have, you have the, the R of, you know, to become 
to relate, to receive and respond. A-R-R-R, A and the three R's. That's another way, just, just another way of looking at Lectio Divina, but this brings more of it, 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 it's more incarnational in a way. It, it goes into our affective feelings and in our, in our sense, our history, and especially into the memory. And again, these are four distinct, I should say, they're not separate, but they're four almost distinct movements to acknowledge how I feel, to then become to uh, you know to relate to how I to relate to the what the how I'm hearing from the Lord and how and then I, I receive this and then I respond to it and and to be able and this is something and sometimes maybe we're just on the we just, we just stay on the first one because we're so we're so. Um, maybe frustrated or I don't know, preoccupied. Maybe it's just very hard to even to know how to acknowledge where I am. And maybe it seems like this whole prayer period is just, I haven't moved off the dime. If we're doing that and we are be acknowledging how we feel before the Lord and at least to try to relate to him somewhat, it's never wasted. We're not doing it on our own. We're doing it in his presence. We're doing it in his presence. And maybe later on, without our even realizing it, maybe as I forgot who said, uh, maybe he'll say something. Maybe in the evening, or maybe in the middle of the night, or it might something might come up, and you say, or maybe it, when I'm praying, and and all of a sudden something will come up because you see he will answer somehow. So then we can somehow receive that, and to say, oh, yeah, let me receive that, let me respond to you, Lord. Let me say yes, less to you. I want to say yes to you and, and really act on it. So, and remember, so these are not like separate box cars. I like to use an, the example of a symphony. You know, there are different, totally different kinds of instruments, the violin and the, the brass, you know, the oboe, the reeds, you have the percussion, you know, and, um, and you have, they're very distinct. They have their own individual sound, but when they all come together, it's one beautiful harmony. Or if you're cooking, you, you need, if you're gonna make a cake, uh, you will need what? You'll need flour, sugar, what, uh, milk and eggs and, and, and baking powder. Uh, they're all important, but once you put them in the bowl, they, they, you know, they just, they make one harmonious thing, but they have to put them all there, you know? <laughs> I think of the, these four that I just said, the first thing is to acknowledge, because if we don't acknowledge how we, how we feel, we can't, then we're just feeling like somebody else is telling us to feel. That's why it's good to have prayers, very good, you know, a text in front of us, as long as we use it as a vehicle, as a springboard, and this isn't our prayer. Somebody else's prayer can't be my prayer. It can help us to springboard, so to speak, but it can't be our prayer. That's St. Augustine's prayer. Our prayer is to take St. Augustine's prayer and to, so it sparks something in us so that, that somehow I'm acknowledging who I am and how am I receiving, how am I responding, how am I relating and receiving and responding. I'm gonna stop here now. Any questions, any reflections? Anybody? Reflect, first of all, questions. I'd like to have questions first. I don't want to lose anybody. If I said something that said, oh, you know, I don't know where, I'm, where, where, you know, where Monsignor's coming from. I don't know what's going on here. Then I'd like you to ask me so that we, you're not lost. Or if you don't see the connectedness, you know, or something, uh, or even the connectedness from last week or something. If, whatever it is, there's no dumb questions. Who wants, who wants, does anybody have a question? Just let me know. Put your hand up like this, you know. Just weigh me down and we'll get to you. Anybody? Don't tell me it's all that clear to everybody. It would be nice to think that. <laughs> anybody? No questions? Then how about reflections? Is there anything that did, did this spark any, uh, any uh, reflections in you that sort of said, oh, the, uh, that, that made you um, maybe think about something or opened a door or 
maybe made you recall a memory of your own prayer or something? Anybody? 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 You out there somehow? <laughs> okay. No, no, no reflections. Suzanne. Huh? Suzanne. Oh yeah. Okay, Suzanne. Yeah. Hey, Father. You Good. know, um, I let me see if I can get my reflection into words. When you were talking about uh, going to a memory, yeah. and even if you didn't think it at the time, that God was there with you. And I, I think that that's a really important thing because there are so many times in our lives, if we look back to times of pain and loss and sorrow, at the time, many times we don't see God there. But even in retrospect, it has to, you have to like focus it in some way so that you can see God there because it's not always obvious. You're absolutely right. That's where resentments come because, or, or abandonment or a sense of despair. Because when you do that, when you bring that, the, you, bring, you invite the Lord into that. See, you have to ask the Lord to come into that because people will say, well, I'm offering it up. Well, again, it's like I'm offering it up. It's a kind of a, how should I say? It's, a, it's my efforts. Well, you know, I have enough problems putting up with it. Now I have to offer it up. <laughs> in, other words, in other words, always do I always have to do everything in prayer? <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> you know, Lord, come into me, you know, come to me, all you who find life burdensome. And, you know, come to me. Let me come into your life. We'll do this together. We'll do this together. Yes, you didn't realize I was there, and so you buried it there. And that that burying it made almost like a little tumor. And that little tumor is like cut off, and it's just sitting there. It's almost like when you eat something that you can't digest, it's just there. You know how it is. You know, it's, it's just not. But this, these, we we thought we, you know, we stuff it, and we stuff it and stuff it. And people who are very very angry and very very resentful, they're just stuffed. They're stuffed with unresolved memories because all of that's it. They they just feel that they're very much been forgotten. They may have been forgotten or maybe abused by many people, even the closest to them. But the Lord wants to be there. He has been there, and He desires to say, "I am here somehow. Come, call out to me, child. Be with. I want to be there for you and with you." And be your strength. How many times uh, the Lord is my strength. The Lord is my rock. The Lord is my, you know, my, my healing. In ways that I don't even understand. That I never will understand. So does that, I think that's very important. Anybody else? So. Uh, I'm seeing. Yeah, Jeff. Just just a comment. Can you put that picture of uh, baby Jesus in the manger that you had earlier? Can you put that back up? Yeah, we're going to do, we're going to end with that because then I'm going to pray the prayer that, uh, that I asked you to pray. And then uh, just before we'll do that. Uh, you want something to say? Yeah. Do you want to, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll post it. And then they'll, we'll just, you want to post it? Uh, Maybe I'm providing you a nice segue. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, this is obvious probably to everybody else, but so often when you look at a painting like that, you figure that, okay, we shine a light down onto baby Jesus. But, but uh, what's so captivating is the light emanates from Jesus up into Mary's face. And it's his love, not only his outstretched arms, but his love shining out uh, to us mortals. Yes. And he's waiting and his arms are open. He wants, a baby wants to be picked up. And once you pick a baby up, he starts to steal your heart. It's an interesting thing. I remember I was sitting in the doctor's office and we were all sitting there like we do very politely keeping you know, our own, minding our own business and hoping that what kind, maybe if we had tests, we don't wonder what the tests are gonna be, how much is this gonna cost and all this other stuff. Um, and we're all sitting there and here a, a, a mother comes in with a toddler, maybe it was maybe about maybe, I don't know, eight months or something. And the kid is, you know, the little toddler is very restless. And so it was a nice office, so it had a nice carpet. So she put the child down and he starts creeping around. 
you know, and she just left, let the child. And so he's, he's keeping her, and he's looking at, you know, kids will just look right in your in little toddlers, you know. And so he's disarming us. And everybody said, oh, <laughs> there was this old, there was this old man, I say old man, you know, like, <laughs> and he's sitting there in the corner and this little baby comes right, and, and his little toddler, and looking right up into him. And he kisses and he goes, and he starts to smile. He took his keys out of his pocket, this, this old gentleman, and he's dangling the keys in front of the kid. Oh, the kid is so, you know, and everybody's smiling. <laughs> He got into our heart. This is what I got. And the Son of God comes into our heart. This is what He wants to do. We're all preoccupied with our own problems, with our what's going to, what the doctor's going to say. But the Lord comes into our world with that. But He comes to save us, to to disarm us. So now, let's pray. Maybe you can put the picture back up, okay, Charmaine? We'll end with the show. Can you put the picture? Now, all of these, you're not going to see them like boxcars, one after the other, but the four dynamics of acknowledging, of relating, receiving, and responding, they're all in this prayer. I'm not going to ask you to examine it. I'm just trying to say it's there. Just like whenever you're eating a, a cake or something, you know all the ingredients are there. And it, or if you're listening to a, a, a good symphony, you don't have to pick out all the different you know, instruments. You just know that it's a beautiful because it has these, all of these dynamics in it. God, my father. I just want to say here, God, my father. I'm acknowledging I'm your, I'm your son. I'm your daughter. God, my father. Advent prepares me for the true meaning of Christmas. Your love for us is revealed in your son, your desire for us. Jesus born as a frail, helpless infant, nursed lovingly in the arms of Mary, your, his mother. With arms outstretched, the infant Jesus pleads to be picked up and held in my arms. Father, free me of all that prevents me from holding your son, the infant Jesus, close to my heart. To acknowledge that there is something that's keeping me cold or maybe distant, hesitant. Lord Jesus, Son of God and Son of Mary, you were born into our human family precisely to free us of all that oppresses us. So great is your love for us all and for me personally. Your great love for me is the source of my true dignity. Why do I continue to judge my worth by the value set by others and fail to see myself as precious in your eyes? Give me the desire and strength to break my attachment of holding on to the stuff that hinders my freedom and that clutters my life. Your love for me is the source of my security and freedom. Jesus, may your birth, your death, and your resurrection be healing for my wounds. Freedom from my fears, forgiveness for my sins, hope in these uncertain times, strength in my weakness, and joy that dispels my sadness. Jesus, at times I let the conflicting voices of these troubled times rob me of hope, anger, harsh words, strife, misunderstanding and uncertainty in this troubled world are like the cold and the darkness of winter that seep into my heart and into my soul. This confusion draws me into myself, isolates me from your presence. It deafens me to your word, blinds me to your beauty and diminishes my peace. Jesus, you are the light that shines and dispels the darkness that surrounds us. You assure me that you will never leave me to face my challenges in life alone. Holy Spirit, enkindle within me the fire of your love. Advent prepares me for the birth of Jesus who was born to free me from my sin. Awaken within me the desire to admit my sins, to confess them and ask the Lord's forgiveness. Empowered by the blood of Christ, help me to forgive those who wounded me by their words, their actions, and their attitudes. Heal me of any resentment toward them. Stir within me the desire to set time aside daily in Advent to pray and meditate on the word, your word of God that became flesh and the word in the scriptures. Give me an appetite 
to taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Mother Mary, blessed are you among women. From you, the eternal Son of God became flesh and was born as my Lord, my Savior, and my brother. I give thanks to you for your yes to the Father, as we heard in today's gospel, to be the mother of our Savior. St. Joseph, protect and guide me as you protected and guided your wife, Mary, who was pregnant with Jesus. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Peace to you, brothers. May this prepare us for a glorious celebration of the nativity of Jesus Christ. May you have a blessed Advent, a blessed and joyful Merry Christmas, a blessed New Year 2021. It was so good spending this time with you. Peace and God bless you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks again for being here. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And thank you, Charmaine, for making this possible. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank wonderful. you, Father. God bless you, too. Thank you, Monsignor. Yeah. Thank, right. you, thank you.